Well, one of the speakers at this year's Forbes Women's Summit was Julie Rice, co-founder of SoulCycle, the indoor cycling company that took the fitness world by storm. And CGTN's Karina Huber sat down with Rice to talk about her success story. She began by asking what started it all. So when we started SoulCycle, it was 2005. I had just left a job. I was a manager in the talent business. I had worked in the entertainment industry for about 15 years. So leaving my job to start a new company was kind of a big risk. And at the time, I had a five-month-old baby. Uh, and so it was, it was definitely one of those leap of faith moments to have this little baby and give up a career that I'd worked at for a long time to start something that I really believed in my gut was, was needed. And you believed in your gut it was needed, but people at the time were telling you that spin classes were passe. What made you think you could bring them back and in your own unique way? You know, not just everyone was telling me that spin classes were passe. My husband thought it was a bad idea. My parents thought it was a terrible idea. But for me, it was, I, I had moved back to New York from Los Angeles. Los Angeles had been a lifestyle city. Exercise was really a part of my social life. It was a part of what made me really happy. It was really my community. And when I came back to New York, there were just big box gyms instructors in group fitness classes that were like drill sergeants, communities that were all about competing about against each other, about being better than the person next to you. And I really saw white space for exercise that would feel joyful, that would feel inclusive, and would feel like it was about creating community. And I just knew it in my gut. It was one of those things that woke me up in the middle of the night. I always say, you know that you need to be an entrepreneur or start a company when the idea that you feel passionately about just keeps waking you up in the middle of the night. This is something that you were thinking about before you met your co-founder, Elizabeth Cutler. You met in January, and you had the first soul cycle in April. How were you able to turn things around that quickly? So Elizabeth and I were connected through a teacher that we had both been taking her cycling classes at different gyms. We met for lunch one day. We shared a really common vision, but we brought different skill sets to it. Elizabeth called me after lunch and said she'd found a space on Craigslist that I should come see it on Thursday. It was a five-year sublet on an old dance studio. We went and saw it that Thursday. We rented it immediately. We figured out everything. We Googled, how do you rent towels? Where do you get bikes from? We went to Ikea. We spent every dollar that we had buying kitchen cabinetry to build our front desk. And we opened five months later. And what was your financial situation at that time? We actually self-funded. Elizabeth had made an investment in a friend's company. A friend of hers started the natural beverage company called Izzy. She had invested $25,000. He sold his company to Pepsi. She made $250,000 from her $25,000, and we started the company with that seed money. So what do you think it was about your relationship with Elizabeth that made it work? What did you bring to the table? What did she bring to the table? Elizabeth is a great risk taker. Um, we have very complementary skill sets. Uh, I'm really, I worked a lot on the people and the PR and the branding and the um, instructor programming and all of our, you know, hospitality. Elizabeth worked a lot on our design, our finances, our business development, our technology, and together we really uh, created the vision for the company together. But you didn't spend any money on advertising, correct? No, not for the, even for about the first 10 years we did not. Uh, we really built our community grassroots, word of mouth, um, we felt like if our experience delivered each and every time, that one person would bring another person and then that person would bring another person. Sometimes the best marketing that you can do is to really deliver on the experience that you promise people. And the experience has been described as almost cult-like, spiritual. Was that the intent? And, and how did you go about creating that intense experience? What, what was vital to create that experience? Definitely. Look, of course, the experience it, it became, you know, what it is today over a bit of time. But from the very beginning, Elizabeth and I knew that it was all about creating empowerment through this exercise class. And so we architected a very specific journey that we would take people on while they were in that dark room for 45 minutes. There were three components to it, a physical, 
an emotional and a musical, and we figured out how to structure each of those components, and when you put them all together, it really creates something that is much more about having a breakthrough on a bike. It's about feeling like you could be more you know, on that bike than you thought you could be when you walked in that day, and it's also an incredible workout. And another unique decision was to structure your model where you charge $27 per class instead of a monthly membership. Why that choice? People really thought we were crazy. Um, you know, SoulCycle didn't just create a new product, we actually created an entire marketplace. At the time, the model was to, you know, to, it was a membership model, right? So you had all these big box gyms, and what they would do is they'd take the imprint of your credit card and they'd charge you monthly whether you showed up or not. In fact, in a lot of ways, it was better if people didn't show up. They could sell more memberships and max out on their utilization. But for us, we really felt like there was something about a paper class model that challenged us every single time to deliver what it was that we promised. If you're only as good as the last time somebody came, then you have to deliver each time over and over again. We also believe that people value what they pay for and that there was a really specific mindset that people brought into that room every single time if they had to go out of their way to pay for a class, sign up for it. There's a different kind of accountability to not only show up for that class, but to really bring the kind of positive energy that we wanted to be in that room. From the outside, if we look at your career, it looks like it was flawless. You started the company, you then sold to Equinox for reportedly $180 million split between the two of you. What, like obviously there must have been some hiccups along the way. What would you say was the most challenging part of that whole journey? Well, I will say that building SoulCycle was really a labor of love and um, in terms of entrepreneurial journeys, this one was pretty ideal. Um, but you know, as an entrepreneur, when you're a person starting a business, everything's an obstacle. I think, you know, it's one of those things where you learn every single day. There wasn't a day that we didn't make a mistake. But Elizabeth, my business partner, used to like to say, you know, we don't have MBAs, so all the money that we spend on these mistakes is our tuition. We're getting our on-the-job MBAs, and I think it's really just about how you recover.